Hi there, welcome back to my e-learning accessibility tips and tricks series. Let's look at how to make documents accessible. I am going to focus on Microsoft Word in this short video, but the principles are going to be generally the same for any software that you use. All right, so let's cover the guidelines real quick. First off, if you are preparing a document and you wanna make it accessible, Avoid including extra blank spaces or lines. Use control enter to break to next page. Use your tab button, format your tabs if needed, if it doesn't work for you, but avoid entering 10 spaces between words or sections because that's going to make it a less accessible experience. Microsoft Word is really helpful because it does have a built-in accessibility checker. As with all accessibility checkers, it is not perfect. It will still miss, miss things, but I'll do a demo for you in just a moment on how to use it and what to look for. Word is really the most accessible word processing software. PowerPoint files are more difficult to make accessible. I would recommend just using a Word document instead or converting to Word. There's a way you can export PowerPoint files to Word and then you just have to edit it in Word to make sure it's accessible. And I'll just say PDFs they're the worst. You can make PDFs accessible, but it's a whole thing. And instead of converting your Word to PDF, why not just stop with the Word and pass out the Word document? All right, that's the guidelines. Let's go to the demo. Okay, so what I have to show you is an inaccessible document and an accessible document. And I'll show you how to run the accessibility checker and what it looks like on both. Now, because I am a little petty and I have job security, I am going to show you a document that I was told to use as a template for my syllabi. My day job is as an instructor in a graduate program for instructional design. And when I got this um, template, I was a little salty because it's not very accessible. Let me go ahead and dive in and show you. So where does great. It defaults to the home tab. If you pop over here to review, you'll see, no, of course I don't see it. There it is. Check accessibility. It's got some different options here. Go ahead, click that button, check accessibility. All right. Now there's something else that you can do as you're checking accessibility. I've always got this pane open on the left. If you go to a view, you can pull open the navigation pane. Now, hopefully, if you're watching this video, you've watched some of my other videos, including the one I did on headings. If you didn't, this not, isn't going to make much sense necessarily, but it's important to use headings in a document. And if you pull up view navigation pane, you can see all the headings that are used in a document and you can actually use those to navigate around a document. Now, right away, you can see that there's problems before I even look at the accessibility pane. There's a lot of weird blank spaces here on the left side, right? And it doesn't appear that headings were used correctly. So right away, we know there's going to be accessibility problems because there's blank lines that have been assigned headings and the hierarchy does not seem to be correct. Again, go back and look at my headings video if you're confused about what I am talking about. Now, I did go to review, I opened up the accessibility checker and that opens up this pane on the right here. Uh, it's not going to be perfect, but it is going to give us a good idea of what we need to do. Now, interestingly, it did not catch the problems with the headings. It doesn't recognize that there are lines assigned headings that don't actually have any text. That's a problem. And of course, it doesn't recognize that headings are not used correctly. Word is, you know, basically dumb. It doesn't know if I'm using these headings correctly or not. So that's why it's important to have a good understanding of how they work so you can visually go through and make sure that they are correct. So that's missing here in accessibility. But there's some obvious things here that are also problems. All right, missing alternative text. This picture here is missing alternative text. That's actually really easy to fix and there's two ways that we can fix it. I consider this to be a decorative um, image here. So if you go on the right click and go to edit alt text, another pane comes open. Uh, there's two things you can do. You can put in the alt text for the text that's here, uh, describe what's in the image, keep it about 100, 150 characters max, or you can mark as decorative. For this, I'd be more likely to mark it as decorative because of its placement here. So there's actually two things you have to do with this image. So you can put in the alt text. Uh, I'm not gonna bother wasting your time. Um, 
putting in the alt text. I'll just say that's, that's my alt text. It's terrible. Do actual alt text. But there's another problem here. So you'll notice that that disappeared because this is checked. Keep accessibility checker running while I work. So that's allegedly resolved. Another example of how the accessibility checker is not perfect. It knows that there's alt text, but it's dumb and doesn't realize I typed in alt text. That's a problem. All right. Another issue here is that the image or object is not in line. Now, when you insert images into Word, it's a little bit tricky. This little box will appear with layout options. Um, there's different options for how to wrap it around the text. There's different ways to make it prettier or to achieve the visual effect you're looking for. But the only one that makes it accessible is checking in line with text. Do you see what happened there? So it moved it up here. I guess I could put it on its own line, but the idea is it's in line with text. It's not just hovering. It's, there's no wrapping because that makes it inaccessible. So that is, that is a bit of a challenge with images, something to keep in mind if you want to use images. If this was just decorative image, you could probably get away with it not being wrapped, but it could still be an issue accessibility rise. Okay, so that's that. Remember, in line with text is the only accessible option for images. Um, additionally, it has a bunch of notifications about hard to read text contrast. I have another video, again, on contrast for fonts and how to confirm that your fonts are of sufficient contrast. So take a look at that. Uh, but you can see here, it's actually flagged all of the um, text that is not sufficient contrast. A lot of this is, you know, notes to the instructor as I use this, um, but it is interesting that it is flagging that, which is cool. All right, and as I mentioned, so I'd have to fix all that to make this accessible and make that accessibility checker happy. And again, I need to fix all of this on the side as well. I need to figure out what's going on with these headings and how to make them work in the correct hierarchy. All right, I've gone ahead and skipped ahead and created my own accessible template already based on that template. It's a, it's a little maddening each year to be given a new template to put your syllabi into and you have to make it accessible over again. I just want to cry every time they hand it to me. All right, so here's the syllabus that I use for my, my courses. If you go to the navigation pane, you can see everything looks really tidy. There's no blank spaces. The caps are used um, consistently. There's good hierarchy here. You can see that each uh, assignment falls under assignment descriptions. Um, it looks clean and tidy. So that makes me, it makes me so happy. <laughs> I love seeing a really nice, neat, tidy document. So I know from the start that that's probably going to be a good thing. And, um, also, if you go to the home, you can check and see uh, how other things are formatted. I have the things at the top formatted as um, title and subtitle. So that's all correctly formatted as well. And if you see all these weird heading names right here, this is what got imported along with um, the accessible uh, template, which is, or I'm sorry, the inaccessible template. If you import uh, another document or work another document, it'll change some of the styles here, which can be a little bit of a pain. I don't have an easy solution for that. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and go to uh, review and check accessibility. All right, look at that nice, clean, tidy box here. I've only got one thing here I need to check and that's the table. And this is something I haven't talked about in any of my videos is that tables can actually be a little bit tricky to make accessible. The one thing that the um, provided template actually does a good job of is they recommend not using a table. They recommend just going uh, day by day, week by week and having a new line for everything and using headings as appropriate. So you can do drop down. They actually did this uh, a good job with this. It's got the main heading and then the subheadings here. That's a good idea. I should do that. <laughs> I did not do that because I love tables. Um, but if you are making sure that the reading order is correct, technically there shouldn't be a problem. So it's flagged all three tables I have in my document and it's just telling me to check the reading order. So there's not the best, there's not a best way to do this, but as long as it's laid out in a way that makes logical sense, it should be fine. That means you need to have uh, headings at the top here and ideally 
you would have headings on the left hand side here. I don't mean headings as in styles necessarily. I just mean that you have labels for, you know, the Y axis and the X axis axis basically. So if someone's using a screen reader, it's going to make sense to them that they can go through each line. So that's a little bit trickier to use. It would be a better idea if I did it the other way, but there's just so much information that it just seems unwieldy to put it into that other format. All right. But you know what? That is basically all the demo I wanted to do for this accessibility checker. I've gone on long enough. Um, anything that you have questions about as you check uh, accessibility in your document, you can just do a quick Google for it. Just search, you know, Microsoft Word alt text, Microsoft Word headings, Microsoft Word image uh, wrap, for example. You can do a quick search for everything, and this is pretty helpful on the right-hand side here about providing you some options for um, fixing these things as well. So it has some recommended options. For example, there's a learn more um, button that will come up, and it'll give you some instructions on how to use the accessibility checker. And remember, Google is your friend. You can just do a really quick search and find the help that you need. All right, again, Word is the easiest format to make accessible. I recommend using this when you need to provide a document that's really accessible. And please refer to my other videos on headings, contrast, images, and so forth to get some guidance on how to make your documents more accessible.